got some work to do now. I did not. No. And then, I don't know, did you have to do any special acting type performance for that role, or was it more just kind of being silly and having fun? I don't know what the quotations was. <laughs> <laughs> it's all acting. Right. <laughs> no, it's real. Um, the, uh, so I did not do the voice of Shaggy. Um, I was doing a movie called 13 Ghosts. <laughs> They're like dogs. They're <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was doing that movie in Vancouver. I got the offer to come down and audition for Shaggy. And um, I was the first one in. And I knew I was the first one they were seeing. And, um, and I knew I was skinny and I looked like him. <laughs> I mean, I figured, like, who's going to do it? So, I would, when I first started doing the voice, I would scream myself hoarse. So I'd sit there and scream, ah, so that I would talk like this. And the voice would be all fucking, like, dude. I mean, it was terrible. <laughs> and I flew down, because I, I was shooting, so they, I flew down on a Saturday. So I'm at Warner Brothers, this huge lot at Warner Brothers. And I was in my car, and I was like, you know, 9 a.m. I just got there with the flight. I landed, I went to the Warner Bros, and I'm in my car, and I'm getting ready to go to audition. And I'm screaming in the car, right? <laughs> so I'm like, ah! <laughs> and I'm screaming myself worse. And all of a sudden, the director comes up behind the car and knocks on the window. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? <laughs> True story. <laughs> um, and then I realized, you want to know how to do the voice? Is anyone want, do you want to learn how to do it? Yeah. I feel like I got a booger. Hold on. <laughs> 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 yeah. the, um, so if you start on your bass, if you start, oh, you go up to the falsetto, oh, it's on the break. Like, <laughs> <And there. laughs> Best job I've ever had and the one that haunts me the most. Because <laughs> I was on like this really cool path, like, I was doing cool stuff. I mean, I'd done SLC Punk, and i just done, you know, like, oof, 30 Ghosts, and stuff. like I was just on this good run of films. And then I did Shaggy, which was a huge hit. And the, the day my daughter, my first daughter was born, the head of the studio called me and said, congratulations. And I was like, I know she's beautiful. <laughs> like, no, we just greenlit the sequel. Like, what? <laughs> um, but that job, so, like, two years after it was done, I called him and I said, I, I needed a job. I mean, I just, I kind of like, you know, it's not easy to be a boy and grow into a man. I mean, this business is a really hard business. And I'm not a guy that, I don't do parties, I don't go and hang out, I'm, you know, I'm like a pretty, I play D&D. &D. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have to say anything else. <laughs> like this is not my jam. And uh, so about three years later, they asked me to come in and do the voice for a cartoon and for a movie. And Casey had been doing the voice, but Casey was growing old. And uh, I've done it for like the last 12 years. And in a land, I mean, I go, I do it once a week. And I can knock out, you know, we do, we are always doing episodes. We're always doing movies. I mean, you may not know it's out there, but it still lives. And it's a day job. And it's like, I'm a, I'm a caretaker for like this iconic part. I mean, somebody else is gonna come along and take that job at some point, but as long as they do, it's my job to protect them. And um, you know, I take that as like a, I take it as a badge of honor, you know? There's this character out there that kids today, I mean, if you sit by my table, if there's a kid, I'll do it to me. I'll do it for any kid ever. <laughs> and there's that thing where there's like a little bit of magic in that character still. 
So I'm proud to have it. It's funny, they're about to do a, a feature length animated movie, like a three part, in, like an Avengers movie <laughs> with all the characters from Hanna Barbera, and they're going to recast me. Oh. Oh. Why are you clapping? No, that's bad. Right. <laughs> that means I don't feed my kids. <laughs> So they're gonna try to get somebody famous. Aww. Aww. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That whole sea punk was really important to me and my friends when we were teenagers. Is there a movie like that for you when you were a teenager that was something you watched over and over again or was that kind of I mean the thing of, so I directed a movie called Fat Kid Rules the World. <laughs> <laughs> well you know that's the most proud thing I've ever done in my life. So I read this book about an obese teenager that finds punk rock music and it saves his life. And I was an obese high school kid with a severe learning disability and braces and glasses and pretty much fucking sucked. And then I found acting and my life changed. So for me, SL, SLC punk was like, you know, today, I mean, any, any time I walk down the street, if I walk down the middle, you know, of Peachtree and 10 people stop me, you know, five will say Scream or Scooby-Doo. Somebody will say something random that they're just IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> and then four people will come up and say, SLC Punk changed my life. And you know, I've held people sobbing that were cutters that tried to kill themselves. There were addicts that, you know, found that movie at a time in their life that was important. So it makes me proud to have, like, connection. But to me, that kid was a different version. So I like that movie. Yeah. How did you like working behind the I would, if I could never act again, I would. <laughs> never act again. If I could direct the rest of my life, if I could act on stage, direct and teach, that's all I would do. It turns out they do not pay <laughs> <laughs> as well as my job now. And I'm on a great show. Y'all should probably have seen it. It's called uh, Good Girls with Christina Hendricks and Retta from uh, Parks and Rec and Mae Whitman from Parenthood. Yeah. It's going to be badass. <laughs> it's a story of like these three women that come that take back their own power from their circumstances. And if you think that the show, right, was pitched two years ago, so it takes a year for it to, it takes six months for them to say, three must say yes. Three months to write it, four months to green light, then they shoot the pilot. We had to reshoot the pilot because they recast the lead woman, who was awesome, but they just went a different way. So two years ago, this woman was like, I'm gonna write a show about three badass women that take back their power, and here it comes. It's kind of a weird, it's kind of crazy timing. I don't know if they were paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> Seems to be a revolution happening. How long am I supposed to talk? Where is it? <laughs> 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 they just left you to your thing. Yeah. You got 20 minutes. Never get on the casting couch. Third <laughs> 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 <Third> rule. <laughs> Especially with cameras. Yes, sir. Where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> get out. <laughs> Oh. Uh, what? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Is that the rumor? I think I've heard that actually. Yeah, I know. And then Night Shyamalan was not anyone at the time. Right. So. That's a terrible movie. I'm in a lot of bad movies. Just so you know. That happens. <laughs> they just didn't understand her. <laughs> well, here's the thing I think about acting. I can identify with every character I ever play. My belief is that all the shit that you bring to, to screen is in you in some capacity. I think that my joy in doing what I do is I have no fear of expressing the ugly side of me and the charming side of me. They're both equally as useful in the work, right? Mm -hmm. The more conventional answer is probably Steve-O. 
<laughs> who's a kid who's like trying to find his way. I always felt like that kid. Was, I always felt like a kid trying to find his way. And then Nev Campbell and I dated for three years, and she broke my heart. So she can suck it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring out Nev Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love her. I love her in pieces. I love her. She was. She literally took me around the world. That was awesome. She was rich. That was cool. <laughs> but she's great. She's a lovely, lovely, lovely woman. That whole cast of Scream was. I mean, the great thing about Scream. I was in a movie called Scream. <laughs> um, so the crazy thing about that movie is that nobody cared. I mean, it was this movie where the leads were from TV, and that was in the era where nobody, you were either a TV star or a movie star, not star, but you were either a TV actor or a movie actor. You very rarely had crossover. And it starred this girl on Party of Five and this girl from the show Friends, and everyone was like, oh. And you know, Wes Craven, God bless his soul, who was a lovely and incredible man, had not made many good movies for a while. So along comes a movie, and you know I'll never forget. I was in, I was in, I was in New York, and I flew out for an audition, and I landed in LA, and I had three auditions in two days, and I got all three parts. <laughs> and one of them was it doesn't happen. I'm a very look. My life is blessed. I like people. I can walk into a room and do act. I can act good. I can act real good. <laughs> <laughs> and I can be charming. And half the, the, the battle in, this, in anything in life is getting over your own fear. Right? The idea of doing something and moving to do something else, the only thing that inhibits you is fear. And fear is designed to be there to run away from fucking bears. <laughs> <laughs> it's not designed to stop you from doing the shit you want to do. Right? So I walk in a room and I'll act my bat ass off and I could care less if you like it. What was I talking about? <laughs> Do you have any like really good memories with Wes Craven? Do I have really good memories of Wes Craven? I have a great memory of Wes Craven. Uh, and I think I've said this before and I like this story. <clears throat> it's probably a good one to end on. What time am I supposed to be done? I feel like I've been talking for like 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> so Wes Craven, so it was back in the day before cell phones. I know, it's weird. <laughs> no cell phones. Mm -hmm. Like one cell phone on set, that was like this thing that you carry. <laughs> 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 and, um, and I had to borrow the cell phone for some reason. And I walked up and Marianne, who's the producer, and Wes were there. By the way, I auditioned for Billy. Just so everyone knows. I auditioned for Billy, and they're like, yeah, you're never going to make out with Nev Campbell. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> I now have the flu, I'm sure. <laughs> Oh, no, wait, that's great. So I walked up. Who asked that question? Oh, hi. So I, my eyes are up. <laughs> um, so, Wes, so I walked over to Wes Craven and to Marianne, and they said, your ears must have been burning. I said, why? I said, we were just talking about you. I was like, well, what would you say? And they said, someday you're going to win an Academy Award. And I was like, shut up. He's like, seriously, that's what we were just talking about. And... Um, I said, well, yeah, call my mom and tell her that. <laughs> so he called for the set phone. <laughs> the set phone showed up, and he called my mom, and he said, your son's going to win a cabinet award one day. So here's the reason I tell that story. First of all, you guys, I'm going to win a Academy Award. <laughs> That's rad. But the second reason is that when shit is bad, when you go through valleys, you have to have little tidbits to hold on to. Like you have to have shit, not only antelopes, but you have to have a belief system that you're worthy to win. Why not me? 
And when it's bad, like, you have to find something to, like, dig out and, like, just mantra and hold on to. And there are more than one times in my life where I thought to myself, I could go sell pharmaceuticals or I could win an Academy Award. So he gave me that in spades, a belief that I, I'm good. And it's, you know, it's easy to forget. 